The pressure volume loop in mechanical ventilation is a graphical representation that plots airway pressure on the horizontal axis against lung volume on the vertical axis during the respiratory cycle. It begins at the lower left corner representing the end of exhalation and progresses counterclockwise during controlled mechanical ventilation. The upward portion of the loop represents inspiration during which pressure increases as volume increases. The downward portion of the loop represents expiration during which pressure decreases as volume decreases. Positive end expiratory pressure is represented as the point where the loop begins and ends on the pressure axis indicating the baseline pressure maintained in the lungs at the end of expiration. Peak inspiratory pressure is the highest point on the pressure axis during the inspiratory phase of the loop reflecting the maximum pressure in the airways during inspiration. The lower inflection point on the inspiratory curve indicates the pressure at which alveoli start to open and is useful for setting appropriate PEEP levels. The upper inflection point indicates the pressure at which overdistension of the alveoli begins helping to avoid volatrauma. During spontaneous ventilation, the pressure volume loop moves in a clockwise direction contrasting with the counterclockwise movement seen in controlled mechanical ventilation. There are two types of resistance encountered during the flow of air into the lungs. They are inspiratory and the expiratory resistance. The inspiratory resistance occurs due to the resistance to the flow of air in the airway whereas the expiratory resistance happens due to the opposition to the elastic recoil of the lung during passive exhalation. They reflect the resistive work of breathing and the elastic work of breathing respectively. In a pressure volume loop, inspiratory resistance is reflected in the slope of the inspiratory limb. A flatter slope during inspiration indicates higher resistance, meaning that more pressure is required to achieve a given increase in lung volume. This suggests that the airways are offering more resistance to airflow during inhalation, necessitating greater effort from the ventilator or respiratory muscles. Likewise, increased expiratory resistance is evident when the loop demonstrates a delayed return to baseline after expiration making the expiratory loop wider. This delay suggests that there is higher resistance during exhalation which may result in air trapping in the lung. Lung compliance refers to how easily the lungs can expand when air is delivered. It is defined as the change in lung volume per unit of pressure applied and is a key feature that can be visualized from the slope of the inspiratory limb of the loop. In increased compliance as seen in conditions like emphysema, the pressure volume loop will show a steeper inspiratory slope thereby shifting the loops toward left. This means the lungs are more easily inflated with less pressure as the lung tissue is more elastic. On the other hand, decreased compliance seen in conditions like ARDS or pulmonary fibrosis results in a flatter inspiratory slope thereby shifting the pressure volume loop to the right. The lungs are stiffer requiring higher pressure to achieve the same increase in lung volume. This is often associated with a higher peak inspiratory pressure and a risk of lung injury due to the increased pressure required for ventilation. The compliance of lung can be divided into static and dynamic compliance. Static compliance describes pulmonary compliance when the patient is not breathing or when there is no airflow, like an inspiratory pause. This is defined as the change in lung volume by the change in pressure, in the absence of flow. It relates to the elastic resistance of the lung and the chest wall. Dynamic compliance describes the compliance measured during breathing, which involves a combination of lung compliance and airway resistance due to the flow of the air. It is defined as the change in lung volume by the change in pressure, in the presence of flow. 
By including airway resistance, it is therefore always lower than static compliance. This is because the pressure required to inflate the lung is used up overcoming the resistance to the airflow. Static and dynamic compliance can be represented graphically with a pressure volume loop. The diagram given here is called a compliance curve, where the top curve represents expiration and the bottom curve represents inspiration. The path or slope of this curve represents dynamic compliance of the lungs as these are plotted during the air flow, or while breathing. And, because these curves are the dynamic representations of breathing, there is resistance both during inspiration and expiration. The space between the curves represents the resistance. In other words, the space represents the energy needed to overcome inspiratory or expiratory resistance which is termed work of breathing. Static compliance is represented by the linear dotted line joining the end inspiratory and end expiratory points of the compliance curve because there is no air flow during that time. Lower inflection point marks the pressure where alveoli begin to open or recruit during inflation. Before this point, the lungs are less compliant or stiff because many alveoli are still collapsed. The lower inflection point guides clinicians to set the minimum pressure like positive end expiratory pressure needed to keep alveoli open and prevent collapse during breathing. It is recommended to set PEEP above this point to avoid alveolar collapse. The upper inflection point occurs at the pressure where the lungs begin to overdistend it indicating that alveoli are being stretched too much. Beyond this point, the risk of lung injury from overinflation or volatrauma increases. Ventilatory settings should keep pressure below this point to avoid causing damage to the lung tissue. While the inflection points are useful for getting an idea of lung recruitment and overdistension, they are not precise and are difficult to measure. Lung overdistension on a pressure volume loop manifests as a flattening of the loop at high lung volumes forming a shape that resembles a bird's beak. This occurs because the pressure begins to significantly rise with no change in the volume. The excessive pressure can lead to potential lung damage as the high pressures stretch the lung tissue beyond its safe limits. Reducing the tidal volume delivered can correct this issue of overdistension. Leaks in the ventilatory circuit can lead to discrepancy between the amount of air delivered to the lungs and the amount of air returning to the ventilator. This is recognized when the inspiratory and expiratory limbs of the loop do not meet at the end of expiration leaving a gap. The gap occurs because some of the inhaled volume is lost through the leak resulting in less volume being exhaled. Flow starvation occurs when the flow rate provided by the mechanical ventilator is insufficient to meet the patient's inspiratory demand. This mismatch can cause the patient to exert additional effort to draw in more air leading to discomfort and increased work of breathing. When this happens, scooped out appearances of the inspiratory limb is observed. This feature indicates that the set flow rate is insufficient to meet the patient's inspiratory demand causing the patient to generate additional negative pressure increasing the work of breathing. Increasing flow rate can address flow starvation. Shortening the inspiratory time will also increase the inspiratory flow rate because the same volume of air needs to be delivered in a shorter period. Normally the pressure volume loop traces in a counterclockwise direction. A slight indentation or inflection at the very start of the inspiratory limb indicates patient's effort to initiate the breath causing a brief drop in pressure before the ventilator takes over. If the ventilator is time or machine triggered, the inspiratory limb begins smoothly without any initial dip or indentation.